So it's that time of year, that depressing time of year where Nelly has to go into hibernation. So we have just spent, uh, actually yesterday, a little bit mm -hmm. of today, preparing Nelly for the winter. We have come up with a method that we have now used for three seasons that has worked out well for us. So in this video, we are going to show you our way of preparing our RV for storage and to avoid damage in many different ways. Hey everyone, it's Izzy and MJ. Thank you for joining us. Let's get right into it. So number one is we remove almost everything, not everything, but almost everything. So we, we go through the cabinets, the plates, mugs, things like that will leave, but we get rid of you know, most of the, the paper products, things like that. Obviously all the food, the spices, it's all gone in the cabinets over here. Obviously the fridge and freezer are empty, but in this, in the pantry, all the food's gone. We take out all the sheets, the pillows, anything, the towels, you name it, it goes inside. One little tidbit of information some people may not think about is if you're gonna leave your appli any appliances on here, especially the toaster, remember to empty that toaster and clean it well because crumbs collect at the bottom of the toaster, which is going to attract the mice. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to leave things on here, you gotta make sure it's completely empty. So number two is gonna be a thorough cleaning, more so than we we normally do in season. Now what that's going to include is all the countertops, windows, the window panes, any of the woodwork, the cabinets, the top of the slides, the dashboard, all that stuff is included. So what do we use to clean? We use a couple of things. Lysol wipes were great. If you want to disinfect everything, we do that. And uh, Simple Green works pretty nice. Uh, I don't use this on glass or wood because it will stain wood and it will straight the glass. But this stuff works really well also. Uh, it's just the Aero Cosmetics Wash and Wax All. You can use this on your glass, you can use it on metal. It works really well. If you want to use furniture polish on your wood, whatever you normally use to clean inside, you can do that on the RV and you can do it very quickly because it's so much smaller. Number three is we clean all of our appliances. Now again, we do that on a regular basis when we're using it, but we really clean it now. So we obviously, we get the stove, the microwave. I, I made sure every crumb was out of any nook and cranny. We use the same products that Izzy mentioned, the Simple Green. Also for the sink, the stainless steel, we use this. I mean, you can use any stainless steel cleaner, but we give a really good scrubbing and cleaning in there. So everything's nice and crumb free and shiny. Number four, we're gonna take out all the HVAC filters. So for us, they kind of run all the way down the ceiling line and they're foam filters. You're just gonna take, you actually saw the dust that just popped out. So I'm gonna take these out today and we're gonna clean all these. These are pretty important. These are gonna allow your HVAC system to work efficiently. So number five is gonna be some kind of moisture control. Now up in the Northeast is not too bad in the winter unless you get you know precipitation. If you're in some other parts of the country you can get really humid. Up here in the summer, it gets really humid. So we use two things to control the moisture. First thing, we actually just started using this. It's called Airganic. And what's really awesome about this product, they come in two packs and five packs. And it's a proprietary blend inside here. It's like a block in here and it's sealed up. What you do, you throw these into small areas. So under your sinks, we put them inside the refrigerator. Instead of putting baking soda, you know, when you shut down your refrigerator for the season, it can kind of smell in there. We pop one of these in each one. But what's really cool about this is that it's earth friendly. It's made in the USA. It's 100% organic and reusable. So once this hits like that 50% level of moisture, it'll start to dry itself out. Until then, it'll keep absorbing moisture in this block. We used to use the, what would they call? The dampers. The dampers. The dampers are, are cool, but you gotta keep throwing them out, right? That goes in a landfill. These things, you use them all the time. So we put this in any drawers, containers, or cabinets, like we said. The second thing that we use, we have a dehumidifier, I believe it's a 32 pint or 26 pint, and we run that in the front of the RV, and what that does, it keeps the moisture levels here between like 40 and 50%, and we just empty it like once a week. It works awesome. Number six is one of Izzy's favorite. We vacuum the carpets and everything actually, but we also steam clean the carpets. So in order to vacuum, and this we keep on here all the time, it's a Musu rechargeable vac, this thing works great. And also what we like about it is it has this light on the front. So what that does, especially with pets, 
we're able to see, we shut the lights out, and it's like a little science experiment for Izzy, but he goes around and he tries to pick up all the dog hair. That's really, really helpful in that. So guys, the carpets, definitely vacuum steam clean number seven is going to be rodent control now when you're in storage and you're not using it uh, your rv a lot this is when those little critters like to come around so like mj said one of the most important things is get the food out they want food second most important thing any holes any voids that have, go from the outside to the inside of your rv should be covered with steel wool or copper wool as well as a foam sealant. We've done that as best as we can, but they can still get in if we miss an area. So we take some other preventative measures. Now, I don't know which one of these work or they work as a combination. What I will tell you is that we haven't had rodents in any of our RVs. So we keep the same recipe. We use a couple things. Number one, the ultrasonic pest deterrent. Now, I don't know if those work. Some people say they do, some people say they don't. They may not work. They're relatively inexpensive. We have them plugged in in the cabin as well as the basement. We haven't had mice. The second thing is these things, rodent repellent. This is our fresh cab. This is just all organic, different scents that they don't like. Peppermint oil, I think there's oregano oil and some other things. They actually smell nice. They come in pouches, boxes, small pouches. You throw them in areas where mice may get in. Under the sink, under the sink in the bathroom in cabinets, places like that. They're not supposed to like the smell. Third thing, Tomcat rodent repellent. Again, this is uh, essential oils. And in here it has peppermint oil, cinnamon oil, garlic oil, as well as something to propel it out. Well, I will spray this all along the floors. I do also spray this underneath the hood on all the wiring. Mice, and I know this for a fact because this happened to my brother, they like to chew on wires. And for some reason they like, like the rubber wires under the hood. So I spray this on there every two weeks a month we haven't had that issue yet finally if a mouse does not get the message <laughs> and chooses to intrude our rv then will we use traps now we haven't had to do that here we have done that at home i'm actually i think four for four catching mice and i catch them quick you're like a massacre <laughs> i catch them quick so <laughs> we will set up traps if necessary i do check this every couple of weeks in the places where you would see droppings if they were come out we haven't seen them yet but we will resort to traps if necessary. Number eight goes without saying, we winterize. We did a video on that. We're gonna link that above. We use air and antifreeze. Number nine, we are gonna fill the propane tank. The reason why we do this is that the propane will expand and shrink. But more importantly is that we wanna have enough propane just in case we have to run the heat in here. And it helps for next season. We don't have to really deal with it. Our hot water heater runs on propane. We have a propane stove. And early in the season, we do go out camping and sometimes we do have to use a propane furnace. So we always keep that tank topped off. Number 10, we top off our fuel tank. We do this for a couple of reasons. A, fuel tends to be cheaper in the winter time than it does in the summer. So why not take advantage if you have a big tank, fill it up. Second thing is that we do run the engine as well as our generator regularly during the off season. The generator probably about once a month for two hours or so. The actual motor will turn it on once every couple of weeks. Just let it run so the, you know the oil's not sitting there and the fuel is moving and we will add some fuel manually also. Finally, what I do is I dump a fuel stabilizer. This is a 32 ounce of stable fuel stabilizer. This will treat up to 80 gallons and I'll throw uh, the one quart of Lucas fuel treatment. Again, it just helps lubricate things. Maybe it doesn't work. I know this works. Maybe this one doesn't. But guys, it's like 10 bucks for each. Not a big deal. That's what we've been doing. It works for us. Number 11 is we run our generator monthly. As Izzy mentioned, it's the worst thing a generator could do is sit. You have to use it. So the more hours, the better. So we use ours um, during the winter once a month for about two hours or so at, at like half load. So we'll bring some heaters on. We'll do that or the heat pumps or whatever, but exercising it so it's staying fresh. Number 12 is going to be maintaining your batteries. There's a couple things you don't want to maintain. Now we did a video regarding battery maintenance. We'll link it above. In there, we talked about the fluid level in there. Much more detail, check out that video. But what's important for the winter is that you either want to be plugged in, which we're fortunately able to do at home. We have 50 amp service and we stay plugged in. Or you want to put your batteries on a trickle charger. Or if you're in storage somewhere where there's no power, you're going to want to disconnect those batteries. And even better yet, you're going to want to remove them and bring them to your home and put them on a trickle charger. With the lead acid batteries, if they drain, and on an RV, there's 
almost always some parasitic drain, meaning you can cut everything off. Something is still gonna drain those batteries. If you drain the batteries down to a certain level, they're done. So in order to try to avoid this costly mistake and maybe in the spring, your stuff not working, we suggest either being plugged in or just completely removing your batteries. Number 13, the next thing we do is we park on our pads, on our Haas pads. The next thing is we close the slides, obviously, and retract our levelers. Number 14, last but certainly not least, is we give her a nice little wash before she goes to sleep, which we always like to do. We're going to cover the body. Now listen, we know, yeah, cover, no cover. Please, we choose to cover. We have a really high quality cover. We don't get scratches, we don't get moisture. It works really well for us. We did a video on that, you can check that out. And we cover our tires. So everything is nice and clean, covered, and she goes to sleep. Okay, so in the comments below, let us know how you prepare your RV for the winter. And for those of you that don't, I know one of our insiders, Michael Grace, is probably gonna be laughing at this because you don't have to winterize and store away. So woohoo for you. We will be there in four yes. years. <laughs> so for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching and we'll see, see you, you on, on the road. road.